Okay, let's talk about drug addiction. Or it's not, I actually, in the research that uh, uh, Evelyn sent, it's not just drug addiction. It can be, you know, gaming addiction or, or gambling addiction, and playing video games too much, right? Or any, and it could even be sexual addi addiction as well, right? So it's, uh, we uh, used to be, oh, let me backtrack. The, I used to, I, I was hired by this guy in Chicago to do sound for the sound lounges he made. And the sound lounges actually rotated. They would tilt and then go back like this. They were very expensive, like $15,000 contraptions, but the whole sound lounge was vibrating and rotating at the, it was pretty slow, so you don't get dizzy, right? And <clears throat> he actually, donated a couple of sound lounges to rehab centers in Chicago and said that they were having profound results at those centers. So he died and I started making sound lounges. And we had a rehab center next to our place in San Francisco, like two buildings down. So one of our students actually was living in that rehab center. She had been a heroin addict, right? And she actually got us to start doing weekly sound baths over at the rehab center. So I did a whole bunch. And went, then we even started bringing them over to our center, getting them on the sound lounges. There is nothing like a sound lounge for rehab, right? Because it totally takes away any need for anything else because it's so blissful and so wonderful and it it brings them to a state of complete peace and stillness there's nothing better right than that right? so that's the beginning here now it's interesting with drug addiction the thing i learned very quickly is with drug addiction, it's a lot about anxiety and not being able to sleep, right? Because once they're off the drugs, some people just can't sleep at all. And then there's just this anxiety that's overwhelming, right? And that's why you're just trying to get back to the drugs, right? Because it does not feel good, right? So we can look at how sound helps with both of those which we, we've looked at already. Right? We talked about where you can actually tune the delta binaural beats to the person. And the way we do it is we play each of the 12 notes and see which one makes them the most peaceful. Right? You could even do that where you play each of the 12 notes and then say, okay, this is the key that would work for you. Look on the internet for songs in that key, right? You can actually do a search for uh, there's, they, they have websites where they categorize all hit songs based on the key they're in. And so you can even find hit song. But again, it's nice to use sounds and music that are actually designed to get them to a peaceful state. Right? But there can also be music that gets them happy because some are depressed, right? Some are depressed. It was interesting. I remember at the rehab center, I had them make the sound of how they're feeling. And this one guy, he just goes, fuck, I can't believe I'm here. Ah, and he just screams. The other thing that was really important as far as safety is some people can easily get triggered when they're just off drugs, right? So I would, the, the head of the center made a big point for me to tell everybody, if this is too much for you, leave immediately. Because it could totally trigger panic attack or anxiety, right? Or if somebody's too sensitive. So you have to be really careful when people are really fragile. There's a lot of trauma too. So there's physical trauma, there's, you know, a variety of different things of being, you know, yeah. on the street or through your childhood. So any type of vibration, maybe in an area that like they weren't expecting could really um, affect them as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, so you, mm -hmm. Do you think that if you uh, would find their keynote that uh, and then and then played for each person made it made a song or a sound for each person's keynote um for instance i have a book by uh helene corin that talks about uh the keynote that everybody is born with and it has to do with their astrology you know like if they're aquarian or pisces or whatever and um that if you were to gather 12 people of each that has a keynote for each one of those signs and form them into a circle that there would be miracle healings happen for people. Um, I have pretty strong opinions about that since I've been finding their home note for over 20 years of people's home notes. Uh -huh. And I find that a person's natural metabolism rhythm when they're at peace is way better than any note you can find based on numerology or astrology at all. Okay. And, I, and, and I've got instructors that, that do notes based on, on those as well. Because yeah, now you're getting them to a physiological rhythm that is actually where they are at peace, naturally, right? So mm -hmm. you're getting them back to their own rhythm. It's worth a try again. I'm not a baby tosser. So, you know, it could be worth a try. But that at this level, when somebody's so sensitive, you got to be real careful. I mean, I've got voice analysis where we can find what notes are missing. And I had this woman who was really fragile and she could not handle the sounds of music at all. I, I said, okay, set the vibration on the table as low as you want. She had it barely moving, moving at all. She turned it so you could barely hear the music within five minutes she came out freaked out whereas your home note i found for really sensitive people is really good it's okay. the best right awesome that's, thank you that's my experience but you know could be worth a try right you know it's interesting i often think of addiction as let's see if i can i'll just say it and then we can refine it a loss of connection to source, a loss of connection to spirit. It's like someone's longing for that bliss of spirit, that bliss of source, that peace, right? And they're bored to death because when you lose source, you, you just, it's like there's no rhyme or reason to do anything, right? And so they're just bored looking, whereas, so any way you can get them back to a connection of, of themselves, to a connection, I mean, if they're totally against, against any spirituality, right, then just go, go for nature, right? But to get them to a connection of their higher self, any way you can do that, I think is really cool. And if, if you do it with sound, it can be, you know, very, very cool. I mean, one, I do meditations where I just say, okay, we're going to tune into every frequency in the universe from the fastest atom to the slowest galaxy and all frequencies in between. And now tune into them all simultaneously. And that takes them into a connection to all, because that's all, I see sources, all frequencies in the universe. So any higher meditations, where you can get them into these higher energies. Because again, their system is not shut down. Their system is simply a little fresher, right? Uh, David, I have a pretty unique um, take on addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for sure, um, you know, loss of connection to spirit yeah a lot of people are you know when they get high you know artificially um they think that is the connection to spirit so they're they're trying to get back to that for sure um so so i work uh predominantly with the emotional body mm -hmm. um 
And so when people uh, go through particular traumas or whatever, uh, simple to complex, uh, when we have emotional denial from this life or past lives, <clears throat> um, there can be there can be aspects that um, basically when we try a particular drug, that drug, <laughs> and this can get into some like shamanism and some different spiritual levels, um, but basically those entities in the drug or um, that that drug basically starts interacting with the denials that that person has within their emotional body. So the stuff that isn't um, uh, loved and accepted about themselves. So, so if I'm working with someone with addiction, I'm getting them back to full love and acceptance of themselves <clears throat> um, and looking for the actual root cause emotion of that. Why, why are they, you know, what part of them is lost that they are searching for through this drug? Um, and so oftentimes, you know, it, it can lead to some kind of a possession. Um, so, you know, my partner does more shamanism type work. So they would actually go through and remove the entity mm -hmm. and then heal the person's actual, you know, field or emotional body or that kind of thing. And then they need to go through uh, you know, some type of a rehabilitation of their neural pathways of, you know, what kind of um, affirmations and stuff can they, can they build themselves back up with um, to replace that kind of maybe self-negative talk to maybe self-positive talk or instead of the negative emotion, more into the positive emotion. And the theory that I work with, it, it comes from a book called The Right Use of Will, uh, which was channeled in the 1980s by Sianda Rohan. And so in that, in that book, it basically says that um, the emotional body is magnetic and we, we need to express emotions through sound and movement in order to regain the uh, you know expansion expansiveness of of who we are in order to allow that light from source to come in and fill that area so that's basically how i work i usually work bron with bronze bowls but i work with tuning forks and gongs and crystal bowls and everything uh, but time and time again, if I place a bronze bowl on someone's body, you know, I guess I've developed a little bit of uh, clairvoyance or whatever you want to call it, but I'll actually just hit a bowl on someone's body in a group without even knowing who an individual is or what they're experiencing. And I'll actually see entities flying off of these people. Mm -hmm. So that comes back to the, those kind of sound lounges in these rehab centers, you know, you don't need to deal with, you know, the generally I say that there needs to be an individual practitioner. I'm kind of against the use of machines in one-on-one -on -one sessions um, for the benefit of, you know, having that heart connection and, you know, the feedback and making sure that, you know, each session is, uh, you know, safe and everything. Um, <laughs> but there is value in, in the sake of addiction where there are really intense entities attached to these people that there could be benefit to using these machines that just vibrate the density in their emotional field open again to receive that light of source that they're missing. Um, whereas the practitioner doesn't have to <laughs> protect themselves from that entity going into their system, which of course the practitioner has to be 
clear enough and empowered enough and, and light filled enough in their own system where they're not going to pick up that spirit. I don't know. That's just my take on all that. Cool. A few things about entities. I mean, one is, you know, to also state it's for the highest good of, of all of us in the beginning and then mm -hmm. invoke protection from the beginning. Uh, but also, you know, I mean, we could get into that whole realm of clearing entities. I mean, you know, I've found that if I connect to Jesus or, or uh, you know, the um, uh, Archangel Michael and say, go now, right, with a strong voice, it actually works. There are certain type of entities that are much stronger. I, know, I have a guy, a uh, psychic that's really big on that. And he's really good at getting like rid of the really major ones. So, yeah, it's like the, the just so you know, the sound lounge is not just frequencies. It's actually beautiful heart opening music. And that's mm -hmm. so that's like, yeah, nice. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, this is really, really cool. So tell us what a session might be like with with that you do. If you if you if you will. Um, I mean, you know, a, a general one on one session is just the um, outline of it. Well, you know, it's an intake, you know, uh -huh. looking at what they're what they're actually going through. You know, sometimes I don't even use sound and I just have people go into what their what their triggers are, what their emotions are. And, and oftentimes I'll have them release through making their own sounds and expressing through, um, you know, and, and shaking and making their own vibration, um, especially in addiction or, um, you know, long-term chronic pain. <clears throat> uh, but if I wanted them to not be conscious of what they were doing for whatever reason, uh, then I, and, and even after doing that, then I would have them lay down and I would generally just put maybe bronze bowls around the body, maybe use a crystal practitioner bowl over the body. Uh, yeah, calling in angels and Jesus and whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, uh, whatever they're called to bring in too. And just shining a bunch of light, shooting light through their bodies, clearing meridians and, um, and whatever, you know, whatever I'm called to do in the moment. Uh, I also do a little bit of biofield tuning with tuning forks. If I want to like look at what history, uh, if they're, if they have a particular place in their body that's being triggered, I'll, I'll use tuning forks or a particular bowl or something in that portion of their biofield. Um, but generally it's just bronze bowls around the body and then I'll place them on the body uh, as needed. And, um, typically if the bowls are around the body, I'll strike a particular bowl and, uh, or I'll strike a number of bowls in a sequence and see which ones are triggering a particular, um, you know, outcome like a change in the breath or, a, or, um, shaking the fingers or something like that. And then just doing more of that until the body is free of um, that trigger. Excellent. Can I can I um, also add to that? Because I also mm -hmm. met a body a body worker, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually just did a treatment uh, before this set before this class er, um, session, and I worked on someone in the UK, and uh, they had never had it. Uh, energy body uh, or energy work done. So I did distance distance healing, but I used a pillow on the massage table to, um, you know, basically mim mimic their body and they're able to lay down where they're at. We're zooming with one another. We both have the same music that's cued at the exact same time, you know, um, uh, that's playing in the background and then, uh, and then just connecting and just, uh, and, and it is, it's absolutely amazing because you can connect and you, with the body, uh, you're not touching them. And sometimes touching people 
uh, is is can be triggering, and I, I, I have no problem like giving up my anonymity. <laughs> I'm I'm you know I've been in recovery for a long time, and the person I worked on today was also in recovery, and uh, never had this experience. And uh, we did uh, Sonic Yogi was who I used. Uh, I've also put, incorporated if they're here in in person, um, I have uh, incorporated. Uh, like different Koshi chimes. I'll start off with the Koshi chimes walking around as they um, are uh, on the table. Um, and then I'll sometimes use the ohm wands. And then I have uh, crystal triangles. I have crystal bowls. I have a variety of different things, a bunch of little um, uh, textural things like little tap, tap atonements. Uh, but specifically, you know, whatever I'm called to do. And then the other you know, the other half would be, so one half would be sound of, of the session and the other half would be energy work. Um, and it would be either, you know, cranial sacral or uh, Reiki, whatever it is that you use, uh, you know, tuning forks, uh, essential oils. I mean, it depends on, you know, massage. I mean, it, it, it all depends, but uh, the distance Reiki or the distance healing, I, I, I thought was really cool. But what we did is we did the energy work and then I did uh, a reading for him. He wanted to uh, have like just some guidance. So I, I have these, um, uh, uh, what are they? There are these uh, activation um, cards. They're uh, sacred geometry cards. And so they're very visual. And so, um, and you can see them and they're, they're made to actually uh, uh, focus on. And then there's details in the book, but it also uh, encompasses a little meditation for that particular frequency and that visual and those words that are, you know, um, activating. Uh, and it's very, it's incredibly effective. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, a, a question about or consideration about the order of what you do as far as intake and stuff. And I've got some ideas because we've been doing this for so long and different people have different ideas. Um, but, you know, it's like you were talking about doing intake f first, but uh, there's kind of my ideal, although it varies, is to actually, before you even do any intake, do a little invocation with sound. Do a some sound and uh, get people in the zone before you even start talking at all, right? And then, and that might be short, right? Not the, the main part of it, of the sound part. And then, then people are much more, feel much safer in a much more peaceful place to actually discuss. And then after you talk about what their issues are, what's really cool is to incorporate intuitively, whatever sounds and energy based on what they say their emotional issues are, right? And what's what's really behind the drug addiction. And so you do, do the whole sound bath. And then to even do another talk session. Now, all of this is based on whether somebody's open to talking, right? Because there are some people that aren't ready to talk at all, right? So you, you, you just whole time you're gauging whether they're open to actually discussing. And then by the time you get to the third talk session, which is after you do the invocation, then you, you, you do intake and then you do the actual sound bath or actually be the second. And then they're now totally blissed out and you've been working on the issues. You do even a deeper thing. How was that? You know, did, how well did it work for you know, transforming what you have going on. And then you could even do like a whole closing of just, okay, this is one of my favorites is to say, and this you can do for just about any issue, visualize that, Im imagine that all of these issues and all of the drug addiction stuff is completely gone in your life, completely gone what would that feel like? And then you can even hang out there. You could do like, you know, do drawings and do writing and or have homework for them to re like a vision board, you know, this whole world, I mean, to really resonate what it's like 
in this new life, right? And then do sound and as, as, as uh, to resonate that and celebrate it. I think um, also we have, you also have to take in consideration too that uh, where they are in their recovery because uh, typically if they're new and they have never had like any uh, recovery, uh, they are not going to be able, they, they're typically not able to imagine their life without drugs. You know, it's because they've been on drugs or they've been, you know, in this addiction, obsession, really, because it's an obsession of the mind uh, for so long that it's so hard. So it's, you know, it's 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 interesting to uh, uh, have to be uh, very mindful and careful around those things, too, because yeah. you don't want to, you know, uh, trigger them, too. You so. could also just uh, lay it out for them yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's the right, best. What it would be yeah. like with, with, yeah, in this new world, right? Yeah. And just yeah. kind of start, start playing and, you know, do it over multiple sessions, too. Very yeah. Good. Yeah. What were you going to say there, Kurt? Oh, just, uh, just thank you for, uh, for saying all that. Yeah. Yeah. The visualization. Yeah. I definitely, I love guiding people. Well, as a practitioner, I also just visualize their issue as being completely gone. Um, as I'm adding sound, kind of like the medicineless hospital that you know Greg Braden has a YouTube video about. Mm -hmm. You know, you just visualize them as being completely healed. Uh, but certainly, yeah, bringing in that writing and the art and the vision board and um, yeah, that's beautiful. Super beautiful, and I like the the invocation with sound, and then you do an intake, and then going back and forth with sound. Yeah. Also, a celebration uh, thing right. at the end can be really cool. Let's party. Let's okay. You know, let's 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 <laughs> let's, 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 let's do the sound of joy. Woo woo woo! Right. It's, it's, you know. But Even it might take several ceremony. sessions, depending where someone's at, before you really get yeah. to the celebration. Yeah. Usually it's like someone who's chronically relapsing. Uh, I guess they just experience this with a, another friend and uh, they're just beating themselves up because they just slipped or something of that nature. And it was maybe a two day slip or a one day slip or one drink or something of that nature. And then they they feel they've lost all this time, you know, that time that they were, in, uh, you know, sober and they were doing it right. You know, uh, that's a really important thing to like have them visualize, hey, you know what? Uh, you haven't lost that time. It's because recovery is 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 a cycle. It's like a circle. You know, it's not it's nonlinear, and uh, and you haven't lost that time. But also, just imagine what it would feel like with one year. You know, that's the one that celebration that you're talking about is uh, really powerful because uh, it, it, it gets you into that mindset. Oh, wait, I could actually get a year. You think I could actually get a year, <laughs> you know? So it's really, it's really powerful. Thank you for another sharing one, that. David. Another one is really good. Um, well, first of all, uh, uh, who is it? The guy that worked with cancer that died right before my conference. Uh, he'd written a lot of books about, about uh, working with sound and, he said, you know, as far as the time, they can say, you know, if you change now, then the percentage will start going up dramatically <laughs> as far as the time, right? So you've now got lots of time left. Um, there's, um, what was I going to say? As far as the actual, um, oh, this is it. What's really cool is to research as you're and take notes as uh, or, or do a kind of like we were talking with autism, do try different things and different instruments and different voice and different everything you do. Just watch what really works for them, especially anything interactive where you can get them to do sound and and or maybe they really like this one bowl. Or they really like, you know, one thing you do. Get them so they totally have it down themselves. Say, you got to get this bowl or you got to, you, you know, let's keep practicing this 
voice technique. So if you ever have a craving, you know precisely what to do, not only to distract you, but to get blissed out, right? So that they've got alternatives, total list of alternatives. And this could be a playlist of music only, right? So let's let's put a playlist of music for you. Are you on Spotify? No, okay. We're just gonna like start finding songs on YouTube. You know, give me, tell me the songs. I'll give you some ideas you can play with, and you're gonna have a playlist you're ready to go with in case there's ever you're you're tempted at all, right? And so you've got alternatives. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you uh, treat people who are addicted at a young age, would you treat them differently? Because Ooh. when they are treated at a young age, their brain hasn't been totally develop developed in certain areas. Good question. Adolescent recovery is, is it is a different, uh, completely different ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different um, uh, protocols and guidelines. Uh, it's more about like safety. And of course, you know, um, they, 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 they want to know that they can have fun and sobriety. Like it actually can be fun. Uh, so like for the young people, uh, we do a lot of dances. We do like a lot of fellowship events um, that will like fun activities to let them know that when they leave this place, that they can uh, stay sober and enjoy their life, you know? So those are the certain things, um, but with the frequencies and stuff, I'm not sure, uh, do you have a protocol with the, with the uh, Montessori uh, group, like those particular, uh, do you have certain sounds that you have to avoid because of the adolescence or? Well, brain it's, just vol it's really just volumes. You just watch for everybody. Yeah. I mean, one mm -hmm. thing though, with adolescents, you know, if they're not super fragile, super fragile, which often they aren't, you mm -hmm. know, banging a gong and screaming could be the deal. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, yeah. totally. I mean, that's like fun, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. So it's really, it is really interesting. That's the thing I did learn, you know, is that, you know, I went into the six to 12 year old room and I played Water of Life, which is totally relaxing and mellow. And they were bored to death. Bored. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, they're like, let's party. Like, oh, what, you know, so that's the main thing. They're not looking for uh, peace. Where, whenever you can trick them into peace, that's cool. Yeah, right? you that's, can lead that's, them into peace. That's cool, yeah. but but mm -hmm. but you know, adolescent means fun and 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 not being bored. Right. Yeah. So Drumming circle would be good. Oh, very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah, even I think um, uh, dementia, like el the elderly, they love the drum, the rhythm, the drumming, as well. So yeah. Excellent. I have to say one more thing. I'm so sorry. It's just coming no, up. No, um, memory, because that's a, it's something like I, I know that works for my mom. If I, um, if sometimes we can have a little clash, like a, a anxiety will bother me or something. Uh, so I'll turn on uh, uh, music from her era, her mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all of a sudden she's singing along and she's not she's doesn't she doesn't feel anxious at all and it's it's a great time you know and it's uh, like music for memory so yes. the same thing is we would have to be mindful as well for like the um, addicts because you don't want to trigger memories because songs with an addict can actually trigger the the memory of using. Um, in that oh. time frame, so you, the music that you've been creating oh. will no won't be even compromised. It won't be uh, an issue. So it's really oh, great. Interesting. Yeah. So you got to find a soundtrack of of songs before they were doing drugs or when they weren't doing drugs. Is that what you're yeah, it's just it's it's brand new music like you're doing because most of the time uh -huh. people aren't using um, uh, using drugs and listening to Enya. You know, <laughs> but I did Maybe a lot of were. drugs and and listened to Pink Floyd, and I still love Pink Floyd. Yeah, exactly. Now Pink Floyd, uh, it's yeah. I mean, the the younger kids are not really listening to Pink Floyd that I know of. Yeah, right, um, right. You know, they're listening to other things like punk rock or 
um, you know, I have a 20 year old son, so I know what he listens to, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and again, and then it's all dance music. So it's rhythm, Mm -hmm. it's trance, it's that dance rhythm beat that can also, you know, get them. We had a whole, I had a whole discussion with a woman that's working with, with adolescents big time around music. And, you know, um, and the problem is there is a lot of really dark music that's not that great uh, energy wise. And what I um, told her is you can't just shift the music to a different style. What you have to do is take that genre and shift it to a different energy and say, hey, check out this song, right? You know, because there's plenty of rap and, and, and uh, uh, hip hop that's not dark at all that's actually really positive and extremely conscious, right? Same with dance music. So, you know, although most dance music is kind of just music anyway, there's not much dark dance music. There's some, but not much. I was gonna comment on, um, and I hope this is relevant, that when I was working on um, with teenagers that had, let's call them, for lack of better words, behavior issues, one of the holdups for their healing and responding to to healing and then falling back um, was always that, like you said, for them to imagine what it would be like in one year, um, they really, it really needed to be worth their while to heal. So for example, if they didn't heal, they still had me and lots of my attention and maybe the guidance counselor and maybe the psychologist. Um, and when they go home, if they, you know, home might be lonely and they may not um, have the same supports if they heal. And they also need time to see themselves and identify with a different type of person that they've become. So whenever I was working on, you know, naughty teenagers, for lack of better words, I always had to make sure that I was watching in the background. There were new friends that were developing. They were developing new hobbies. They were developing new skills. They had healthy, you know, groups that they were now following so that I could back away and back out of their their life and they they were having opportunities to get and time to get used to who they were I remember one little guy in grade two we literally traced him on the piece of paper and talked about what did he used to do and what does he do now and we had kids in the class help him with that to acknowledge the changes that we would see and we posted it and then when he would backslide we could walk to the poster and say what side of the poster was that behavior on yeah you know Mm -hmm. does that mean that you're not improving no it just means that that came up today you know i'm not Mm -hmm. expecting it to be perfect but just raise your awareness and for my own self i have a chronic condition and my first year retired I had a big flare up, but I also had an opportunity to use some treatments that were, there was no point in in doing them when I was in such a high stress job. So this was my year. And because of COVID, these appointments became my social life. And Mm -hmm. partway through, I had to look, I was always conscious of Are you not getting better? Because then you won't have that nice time with Dr. So-and-so and and Dr. So-and-so like, and I was like, you need to wean off now. So you know what? You're going to sign up for some Zoom yoga. And you know what? There's three neighbors that you need to start calling on a regular basis. And I started to make sure that I was replacing with something else and seeing myself as something else. When you're having nine appointments a week, suddenly you are your chronic condition. It becomes your way you move in the world and your outlook and your next appointment becomes your social life, right? And it was bizarre, but it was because of the way COVID was. Very cool, excellent. Yeah, you know, if you can also develop discussions about purpose and life, I mean, that's really, really key, but that's a tricky one. But you know, one thing that 
I mean, that you can start discussing it, what they're, they're excited about, because that is really a key. But, you know, there's one thing that could work here and there, maybe more often than not, and that is, you know, you could develop a sound healing lifestyle where you're doing sound healing, you're playing instruments, you're actually going on Zoom or actually watching YouTube sound healing things, and every single one of those is not boring at all. Actually, they're really cool. They're really cool, right? And then you could start, you know, even doing your own sound baths for yourself and expressing yourself and and just look at that as your new lifestyle, which is just a blast. I mean, there's nothing else I would do. One of the things that <laughs> Zoom has done in this COVID is that it's made all the, the meetings internationally and there are no boundaries. Uh-huh. And meeting right. new people and engaging is one of the hardest things when they like get out of treatment and they're back in their environment, um, you know, and they have to rebuild their lives. It's very frightening because you have this safe bubble and all of a sudden you're back out there. But if they make these connections with, uh, you know, people that are um, connected with them, you know, to their interests, you know, it really is. It's been very beneficial. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I think this is really key. I mean, developing exactly what 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 you just said, uh, Jacqueline, before is developing a whole uh, lifestyle um, of things to do instead. And when you get that lifestyle and you really love it, then it's a done deal. You it's all taken care of. You know, so whether it's basketball or or surfing or sports or sound healing or getting rid of entities and other people. <laughs> There's one thing also, another thing that they could end up doing that you can always suggest if they're going down that track is say, you know, one of the best careers that people do is to help people uh, on things that you've conquered, you know, or you, challenges you've had, right? So think about, you know, how you might actually help people with, with uh, rehab yourself, right? Maybe that could be a career thing for you that could be really fulfilling. Very cool. Yeah, there's this whole area of really dealing with, you know, there's there's really two parts to this if you just zoom out. We're getting them at peace and then also working with emotional issues. And then you can use the brainwave entrainment tuned to them for delta, theta, alpha, and beta that can be really effective. Because then it gets the mind completely the whole brain or nervous system actually because the brain's connected to the whole nervous system it gets it totally stable right and when you're stable you don't need much at all right? you know in the old days louise hayes uh videos that she had she walked you through this meditation of working through confrontations working through issues with your life was just really really powerful and helped many people so I think this would be a great thing to have in your library, you know, of different sounds that they know that they could just go to and, and make it a part of their everyday recovery. Cool. I've also got a class that you could recommend, and that is 11 uh, techniques with sound to actually overcome challenges and conflicts. And we do everything from letting it be to being present in your body, to gratitude, to compassion, to love to even joy and oneness, right? And then and also, actually, actually have uh, horrible sounds I play through the whole workshop and everybody's blissed out. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I want to take that class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, also too, um, uh, they, uh, 
uh, there's like a, there are also like other things that they can do, um, uh, like a gap, there's a gap program that helps people. So this would be more on the social service, like social end, social services, but they get like a, like kind of like a buddy that takes them, um, that is their friend and they could talk to them at any time um, uh, about their, you know, about their recovery. And, uh, and then it helps them to transition out of those uh uh, those treatment centers, um, but getting them like inspired about using uh, sound therapy or like, uh, you know, reconnected with something that they, um, they were, you know, they, they love and they're passionate about is just like, I, I, you know, I was going to say something else and I completely forgot what I was going to say. So I'm going to say, you know, <laughs> this just triggered a major idea, you know, with funding, we could just set up uh, um, like the gap centers. Or, which would be these centers which have all these instruments and it's like four people in recovery right and it's yeah. like okay you know we're gonna we're gonna just jam like three or four times a week you know maybe every night right oh my you god come over I just... and, and it's funded by by a philanthropist and we're yeah. funding these centers all over and it's like the place mm -hmm. to go we can do a little therapy but we're mostly just going to jam and have fun Right, oh my get, gosh, that's amazing. I just got an invite for that, but in the UK. <laughs> really? In the UK. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's, okay. they're Field like, trip. oh, this is, um, it's actually, yeah, for anyone who, it's called, um, oh gosh, what is the name of it? Uh, it is called expression, uh, expressionswellbeing.com. And it's a, it's basically like they have different centers, art centers, and it's about getting people re-socialized right now. That's what I wanted to say is that with COVID, we have so many more emotional, like mental health issues right now where people are afraid to uh, go out. They're afraid to uh, socialize, you know, um, they're depressed, a lot of that. So getting them like in, involved in like, even if it's just an art class on Zoom and it's free, you know, that this, I think the um, the NHSS also sponsors them, and like the Salvation Army sponsors this group. It's really it's so great that you just mentioned that. <laughs> this, this is so perfect. You guys, yeah. you know, if anybody interested, could totally, and maybe we could do it as well. We could totally yeah. set up like a whole whole um, group on yeah. on uh, on uh, you know on um, on Facebook where yeah. we have have weekly or, or more often meetings of exactly this right yeah the yeah. jam sessions and oh my god this and then this could be really cool really yeah cool. bridging the gap that's another way of saying it too bridging the gap and, and you know and you have act yeah I, I could tell you a little bit more about that too because uh there's some really great like uh community or not uh, like committee services that um uh, I belong to that allow, uh, you know, bridging these gaps to people who are not like, you know, underserved areas, like, you know, uh, the seniors that can't uh, really work a, you know, mm. technology and they're just sitting and just, they're so lonely. They're so lonely. So the music, yeah. you know, is really good. You know, when I was talking about treatments for different issues, it's like it, the, not only a whole range of YouTube videos, but like a whole live section. And then I could see, you know, with the funding we're getting to actually fund these whole websites, you know, which are, okay, here's the, the, you know, it could be a whole, and then you advertise on Eventbrite, Meetup, and then you, but you're going to have people that are core members. Uh, yeah, it's just great. It's really great. Oh, you're muted now. Uh, and it could be like a volunteer service to get people back out and uh -huh. just being and feeling good cool. about cool. being, you know, helpful. Excellent. Excellent. This would be like a perfect thing for somebody that's just in rehab himself. Like, okay, you can run it as a volunteer and maybe even work it into a business. Wow. It's excellent. The rehabs would do that. There's other uh, organizations that don't want to get involved in that kind of stuff. But uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm ready. Yay. 
I would like oh. to know who you, who helps you with the grant writing because I want to learn that. That is what I want to <laughs> learn now while I'm sitting, you know, and not being able to do as much. <laughs> um, a lands. A lands. Yeah. Okay. So, so is that is that like a training? Uh, no, no, higher beings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to actually. I've never written a grant. I don't have to write grants. I've got neighbors. It's like it's like I've got some beings on the other side that are helping. I've got neighbors oh, okay. that are no multiple billionaires. In fact, they're out front next door, right there, <laughs> right now, and so they uh, so they keep showing up at the door, right? So I haven't worried. And also, I have my friend, my best friend, who's got uh, kind of unlimited sources now. So, yeah. Well, it's divinely timed then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like when you help when you help people in a really big way, spirit kicks in and says, "Okay, here you are. We're going to Yeah. All the That's content. awesome. Right. There's one thing that uh, I wanted to mention um, is when you're or when you're getting people to the other side is to also say this is not you. This, these are patterns. These are, are uh, entities, whatever. This, but this is not you. You are not this being who's addicted. You are a pure, perfect spirit in every way. You are a point of awareness. You are a soul. It, you are not that, you know. And don't identify with being in rec a rec person in recovery. Don't identify with a person that's, you know, blown it. Don't identify with, you know, being a drug addict. You are not that. That is just this craziness of society that and patterns in the atmosphere that have taken over the system, but it's not you. And then work on the sounds that resonate and say, okay, where, who are you? You know, and say, you are a point of, everything you are is still. A soul is still, a spirit is still, a point of awareness is still, the witness, right? It's all stillness and all this other is chaos. It's all about getting, going from chaos to skill, stillness. Okay, any other thoughts or comments about this? This has been great. I guess one one other quick thought. Um, sometimes someone has a sensation in one part of their body, and if you work on that part of the body, it may move. Mm -hmm. um, so just being aware of that and and just having the continually checking in with the client to see where that is now and what's happening now, and eventually getting that basically like up and out of the body or down and out of the body. Um, cool. Just that. Thanks. Yeah, uh, track it down. Chase it around. <laughs> yeah, I like what you said, but um, I often, you know, either move it out through the feet, through the crown, or move it out through the heart. Move it out. Another really beautiful thing to do is to have the person, um, whatever they're ready to let go of. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's different things you could do, like different, you can imagine like a rose in front of them, in front mm -hmm. of, they can imagine a rose in front of their heart and just giving, imagining the rose is magnetic and just giving whatever that is to that rose and, you know, letting that rose, uh, whatever get composted or uh, blow up or giving that to Mother Mary or whatever, just allowing them to um, feel something that they're ready to let go of and give that away. Yeah. So, I, some, also to like have it sent to the sun sent cool. to, because the sun will just burn it out super cool. easy. Yeah. It's one of my favorite ones. Thank you for sharing that. We've got, uh, uh, 12 techniques that we go over and using the voice to release stuck emotions. And the first one is to make the sound of it, which you got to be careful with because you can just bring it up. But if you have the intention of releasing it, that's the key. 
The second is to make the sound of it and slowly, ever so slowly, transform it into beauty and love and light or just harmony, right? So it's like, but do it over a long period of time so the subconscious believes that it's changed, right? Another is to make the sound that the part of the body that's holding the emotion would like you to make, right? And then you're not dealing, you're not resonating the emotion, you're actually, so if it's fear or anxiety, which you don't want to make the sound of, you never want to make the sound of fear or anxiety, then you're just making the sound of the part of the body that's holding that, wants you to make, right? And then, then we get into actually having higher beings make the sound through you, and have source make the sound through you. And for some people, they look at you like you got two heads, and other people, it's like really major, right? And then you can also just send love, the sound of love to any of the emotions. You can resonate the sound of your, your soul. And then, of course, the others that are really cool is just to, uh, you know, do gratitude, make the sound of that, do uh, compassion, do love, do, do just make those sounds, right? <clears throat> Basically, you could just tone as well, right? Any stable, consistent vibration, which are all the vowels, will get that chaotic anxiety out of the body. Get you back to peace. Yeah, the more you can get them involved, the better, right? instead of just doing it for them. Yeah, or just breath. Um, and sometimes Ooh. I'll have someone do Ooh. audible breath. Oh, excellent. That's really important. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, like I had a 10 year old boy that I think his mother died and he couldn't he couldn't make sound, but he was breathing. So I just had him make audible sound like, ah, you know. <clears throat> Excellent. You know, also you can actually do sound while they're breathing. So I'm going to do in breath, out breath. Musical fifths are good. You could even use bowls. Use one bowl for the in-breath, another bowl for the out-breath, right? But also when doing breath, I found when you can get them to breathe deeply at their own natural rhythm instead of guiding them. At first, it might be nice to guide them, but eventually say, you know, now just do that at your own rhythm. I was at a breathwork uh, conference a couple of years ago, and one of the main guys that was, was presenting, he said, just get it in, right? Just get it in. Get the air in. The whole, that's the whole deal. However you do it, get it in and do your own tempo. Don't worry about five in, 12 out, you know. You can do that, but it's, it's like, you know, your rhythm is the best breath there is. And it's based on your metabolism, actually. Cool, very cool. Really, really excellent. So I've had experiences um, where um, you join somebody in their breath, in the rhythm of their breath. You give over your breath to theirs. Mm -hmm. And um, often tears will come up mm -hmm. and on their part. <laughs> and um, it's a unique form of support. I have no other words to explain it. And, um, and for releasing, I've had that where the responsibility, this was in a yoga workshop, and I was given a partner who was trembling and shaking. And as we did breath work, and I had to uh, make sounds for her and watch her breath. So on her exhale, I was to make sighing sounds that and then eventually she joined me and um cool. it was a huge huge release you could see she was yawning and yawning and then tears and then that kind of thing and you just ride her like you have a saddle and um that sort of unconditional really concrete support is very moving and sometimes i think gives people the courage to let a little more out Nice. It's so funny because it's not like 
you can look this up, what we just went through. There's like nothing really this deep out there, right? And it could, it's so transformative and so powerful and so effective. The potential here is so huge. You just get really excited. We're yeah, helping a lot of people. Well, that's about all I have for today. Any other final comments or questions or anything? Thank you. It's been very healing. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else want to share anything there or anything they're doing? A lot of people I haven't talked to. Well, I had one personal experience um, in my healing journey. I've been strong enough now that I can work three days a week and I was able to work in an herbal shop. This was great. And, but the pain inside my body would just get overwhelming. And one day they have a Tibetan bowl there. So I took the bowl out and I just played it and I could feel the pain just mm -hmm. lift up and away. And that's just been, so I keep searching, you know, for more sound healing um, since then I've been able to get a drum and use that in sessions outside and just drum all over the body. So it's been really cool. Check out the uh, meeting we did on pain. It's like we got really detailed. We had a doctor that, that knew all the mechanisms of pain and how you could work with a uh, full range of issues. And it was incredible. It's the uh, link to the videos in the email I sent. Thank you. Awesome. Nice. Excellent. Hello, um, I'm Britta and uh, I'm also from the UK and I found this very interesting. I'm new as a sound practitioner, so I'm still wanting to do a lot of learning and uh, there's been a lot of inspiration here and I will study more. Um, and I was also wondering if there might be a way of connecting with each other um, in the same countries or um, if people have interests. So. Well, you know, well, you know the list, the of, list people of people in here. In here. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. The list, the of, list people of people are. are oh, 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 yeah, unmuted. Oh, I muted you and you unmuted. <laughs> um, they're, they're in the, um, um, the file. And this is cool. Um, let me show it to you if you haven't already been there. Let's see. Okay. Medical sound is so our Google Sheet file has the uh, contact info and information about everybody in this group, which is almost 500 people now. So, welcome to contact people in this group. Um, do not use this list for marketing or anything other than that. This though, right? And uh, and then you know also if you have anything you want to share with the group. You can also send to me, and I'll include it in the next uh, newsletter to everybody as well. Yeah. Nice. What is it, what's the link to that? The uh, Google Doc is there a link? Uh, I'll put it in the chat. I say oh, if you if you signed up for the association, it's in the emails I've been sending. Um, if not, you can sign up at medicalsoundassociation.com. And then scroll down to the contact form, right? Although, yeah, you should be able to get it with that link there. I was having trouble uh, uh, signing in or uh, becoming a member for some reason. I don't know why, but I had a bad link or something. So uh, the I'll the Medical check again. Sound Association. Yeah, uh, I think it was either that or the ch or the children's one. It was those two. Yeah. Well, yeah. my email is David. At soundhealingcenter.com, so you can always just email me directly. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. The chat. What's your last name, Britta? What's your last name, Britta? Oh, oh okay. There's another Britta. In the, in the chat, it's Britta von Basedo. Okay, okay, cool. cool. I, 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 got, I got for you know how you get emails for Facebook. I've got 
like one of the few emails I ever get from Facebook is for a Brita, but it's not a different last name. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for your time and energy and and sharing. This has really been excellent. Let's do this. Let's do a sound for all those that are struggling with autism or drug addiction to resolve it. Imagine it's all completely resolved on the planet. That's a hard one. Let's go for it. Imagine completely resolved and do a sound as if it's already completely taken care of. Imagine it's also there's sound everywhere on the planet to help people in these areas. And do a sound of that. Let them hear. rest of the day. <laughs> See ya. You too, Dan.